What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. Uh, I am your host, Mistress Carrie. Welcome to the War Room. Can you guys hear me okay? Are we good? It's been a week. First of all, I want to say what's up to Rob Rivera on Instagram, checking in the War Room tonight. Uh, Michelle, checking in on Facebook. Ash on Facebook. Want to welcome everybody to Cocktails in the War Room, the Tuesday night show I do every Tuesday night at 8.30, live on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. And um, we've had a lot going on. First of all, the lights in the war room are never usually this hot, but we are in the middle of a heat wave right now, and I am literally melting under these lights. Um, In case you are new to the war room, and you may be uh, welcome, I'm your host, Mistress Carrie. Welcome to the War Room, which is the room in my house where I keep all of my military memorabilia, all of my family's military memorabilia from generations of service, and it's also where the bar is, which is why we chose to ride out the pandemic here in the War Room starting back on March 14th of 2020. We spent 80 nights in a row together, and then in June of 2020, when we launched the Mistress Carrie podcast, we turned Cocktails in the War Room into the weekly show that it is now. Why is my cable like that? It's terrible. And um, so we get together every Tuesday night at 8.30 Eastern to talk about music, talk about sports, talk about life, whatever's going on. And uh, we have had a lot going on in the last week. So we can't wait to get back uh, to Charleston and play. So Rob from Nonpoint, um, obviously noticing that I'm on 98 Rock now. Rob, I am on a bunch of stations around the country now. So it's going to be pretty difficult for you guys to play someplace where I can't get a hold of you um, because we're all over the place. Uh, Let's see. Bish is checking in on Facebook. Um, Elsa's on Facebook as well. Uh, Jonathan laughing at Justin Timberlake, who got busted for DUI last night in the Hamptons, bailed himself out today. He's on tour, was obviously in the Hamptons for the weekend. And um, from eyewitness reports of the bar in the Hamptons, he was like stealing other people's drinks at the bar, like being that guy. It always amazes me, people that have literal unlimited means, that they don't just have someone drive them. Like it's so easy that even regular poor people like like me, like us, um, could just get an Uber. I mean, if you know you're going out drinking and you're worth $400 million, um, just get an Uber. Like please don't drink and drive. It's so dangerous on so many levels. But when people that I know can afford the limo, like people that have a private jet and they're still driving their own cars and getting busted for DUIs, I just, I don't understand. I'm trying to hydrate before we have our celebratory drink. Uh, Let's see. Nolan Bryan says, love the show on Instagram. Thank you. I don't know if you're listening um, or if you're joining me here in the war room because of 98 Rock or 106.3 The Bone up in Portland, Maine, or 100 FM The Pike in Massachusetts. Uh, but there's a lot of different places for you guys to choose from. So, um, so yes, I did see the Justin Timberlake thing. It just I just don't get it. Uh, let's see. Love you, Mistress Carrie. Go Celtics. Okay, so first of all, since we were in the war room last, uh, last week, last Tuesday, we were here in the war room, And the Celtics were in the NBA Finals. And we were preparing for Tom Brady to get inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame last Thursday night at Gillette Stadium. I got a last-minute ticket. Um, My friend Wendy, who is an absolute rock star, um, had an extra ticket because she's a season ticket holder. And she called me up. She's like, do you want to go? I was like, yes, 100%. We're going. Yes, 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 yes. So we went... Now, you guys know that here in the war room, I like to show off my collection of T-shirts. It's a little big. But this is the T-shirt they gave out in the gift bags at Gillette Stadium last week. So I had to wear it. And then, of course, I had to wear all of the green and gold beads because of the freaking Celtics last night. And as I was preparing for the show today, I realized that even though, oh, I'm a sweaty mess in here. As my mom would say, I'm sweating like a whore in church. That was my mom saying. Um, 
I realized that we have gone through a lot of stuff here in the war room together. We wrote out, oof, hair is crazy. We wrote out a pandemic together, like losing Tom Brady to uh, Tampa Bay. Like we've had a lot of things happen. But one thing we have not had happen since we started the war room, and this is what, episode 279, is that we have not been able in all of the championships that Boston and New England has celebrated over the last 21 years, we've never been able to celebrate one here in the war room until now. So I thought tonight, since you guys can always tell what I'm drinking based on the glass here in the war room, and the show is called Cocktails in the War Room, that I thought tonight a little bubbly was in order to celebrate Banner 18 and the Celtics. Oh, this is interesting. So I always love the idea that you could get small bottles of champagne. This one has a twist top. It's not a real cork. I was getting ready to like pop a cork in here. I wasn't seeing a plastic twist top in my future. Jessica says, I just saw Wednesday. What a cutie. Double horns for Travis. Travis, we'll talk about you in a little bit on the show. But for the first time in the four and a half year history of cocktails in the war room, we get to celebrate a championship. So to Banner 18, to having the most wins of any team in the NBA, to Boston, to the Celtics, cheers. Cue the duck boats Friday morning, 11 a.m. I'll give you guys all of the, uh, uh, I'll give you guys all of the uh, parade info. I know, Voorhees, no cork. It's a fake cork. They made the plastic twist top look like a cork, but it's not a cork. But I've been keeping these little champagne bottles on ice, knowing that eventually we would have a reason to celebrate. And we are. So cheers to you guys. Anybody that's new to Cocktails in the War Room, by the way, uh, let me know in the comments that this is your first show and where you're watching from. And the War Room family, as they have dubbed themselves, uh, would like to welcome you properly. And you picked a good night, unless you hate the Celtics. Sorry, flee from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Sorry, not sorry. Um, so it's been a really good week to be a Boston and New England sports fan. They sold out Gillette Stadium in June to induct Tom Brady into the Patriots Hall of Fame. They announced they're retiring as number 12, that Mr. Kraft has already commissioned a 12-foot Tom Brady statue that is going to be put outside of the Patriots Hall of Fame that's going to be dedicated this football season. Um, then the, the away game... They filled up the arena at the Garden to watch the Celtics on the giant screens. And then, of course, last night they sold out the Garden and um, the Celtics brought it home in five, which is just crazy. Um, hi, Wednesday. Do you want to come over here and say hi to everyone? So for anybody that's new to the war room, I have a co-host in here every week. Her name is Wednesday. That's her. Say hi, Wednesday. Say, I like to kick everything off the couch, all the pillows, all the toys, all of that stuff, right? Would you like maybe a little cookie for being such a good girl? She has been very unhappy with the temperatures. Um, yes, Christina says uh, they won on June 17th, 617. I know, like 17 years to the day from when the Celtics won their last banner, it, losing Bill Walton, like it's just there. It, it was just kind of meant to be. I don't even know why the Mavs decided to get out of bed yesterday. It was just they should have just been like, "Now nah, we're going back," because there's no way we're going to win, right? Wednesday. So that's where you can find Wednesday on Instagram. By the way, right? Are you being a good girl? You've been very hot today, haven't you? Yeah, you don't like the heat at all. Neither does your mom. I don't like it either. Uh, good evening, all, says David Parker. Cheers. Happy Tuesday. Hope Wednesday's doing good. Brady just needs to sign a one-day deal with the Pats so that he can officially retire a Patriot. I was a little bit surprised that that wasn't part of the uh, the Hall of Fame thing. 
He did say a few things that I thought were really interesting. He set up on the stage, um, it wasn't you, it wasn't me, it was us. And he also said, to be clear, there is not another coach in the NFL that I would rather play for than Bill Belichick, um, which I thought was unbelievable. Uh, finding out Belichick's 24-year-old girlfriend was there was also unbelievable. Right, Wednesday? Oh, this is going down a little too good. Mm. Yummy. And um, then, obviously, the end of Tom Brady's speech where he says, you know, I am a patriot. Like, he's a patriot. But, yeah, the, the one-day contract thing, I don't know why he hasn't done it. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's something to read into that or not. I have no idea. What's up, Michelle? Uh, Bish says, Carrie, I am running my last road race on Sunday, the BAA 10K for Brigham and Women's Hospital. That is fantastic. Elsa says, no pants day. Yeah, today is definitely a day you do not want to uh, wear pants. Travis says, he was being gracious. Bill is something else. You know, here's the thing. Those were all Bill's decisions, right? Bill drafted him. Bill decided to play him over um, Drew Bledsoe. I feel like you could almost split the Super Bowls in half. The first three were because of Bill. The second three were because of Tom. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, how's the champagne Louise wants to know? So this is kind of like my favorite. It's not champagne. It's Prosecco. La Marca Prosecco is kind of my favorite. It's my jam. Um, whenever I have something to celebrate, unless I'm drinking a really expensive bottle of champagne or something that was given to me as a gift or, you know, anytime I ever signed a new radio contract, um, I always would bring an iced bottle of champagne into the studio and toast with my bosses. Um, I drank a really, really expensive bottle of champagne when um, WBCN went off the air. We drank a really, 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 really expensive bottle of wine the night AAF went off the air. That was like a $2,000 bottle of wine. But if I just need champagne for something, New Year's Eve, whatever, I'm not getting paid for it, but La Marca Prosecco is my jam. So there you go. Um, let's see. Bill dating a woman old enough to be his granddaughter yeah, and you know what? Like, this stuff happens all the time, right? Tom Brady's been dating younger women. Um, I mean, like, every owner, I think, besides the Celtics, like, Mr. Kraft is married to a woman that's, what, 30 years younger than him, 28 years younger than him? I mean, she's a doctor and definitely older, but not his age by any stretch of the imagination. So... John Henry's wife is significantly younger than he is. It is what it is. Uh, Prosecco is usually a more sensible price. Yeah, and I just like this one. Like, I've been drinking it for years. I just think it's really good. Um, Brendan says AAF was way better than BCN anyway. Yeah, well, I totally agree. Uh, what's older, the champagne or Bill's girlfriend? Uh, well, this Prosecco, I think, is fairly new. So I'm going to say... Bill's girlfriend is older. But uh, going back and watching the Gronk jokes from the Brady roast, knowing now that everybody there knew about Belichick's girlfriend, kind of hilarious as well. Great granddaughter, says Stephen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's up, Ryan? Donna says, when Tom mentioned uh, Myra Kraft, that was tough. Yeah, I mean, look. You know, there's no question that Mr. Kraft or anybody in the Kraft family or anyone in the Patriots organization wouldn't give anything um, to have Myra back, right? Mrs. Kraft was the love of Mr. Kraft's life. Um, but I don't fault a widow or a widower for remarrying and trying to find happiness. I, you know, I don't, I don't fault him for getting remarried at all. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like to spend that many years building an empire with someone and then to lose them in such a public way. Um, it just sucks. Brennan says Brady's mom looked like she is doing amazingly good and she looked healthy. And let me tell you, like, I don't know what you could see on the stream. Um, 
But what we were seeing on the screens in the stadium, they were showing her, and every time they showed her, the place would go crazy. And she just was beaming. She just looked so happy, so proud. Um, you know, the 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 compliments about the region, about, you know, the staff at Foxborough, the people of New England, um, all of the memories that the kids have, and all of that time. Like, it was a really sentimental... You could tell that the Brady family, like, really does appreciate New England. Um, and obviously, one of his sisters being married to Kevin Euclid, you know, who is a Red Sox legend, you know, the the the, the sports legend's status in that family is is pretty significant so um i just thought it was emotional no hate to craft no donna totally get it and it was really emotional and a couple of times i found myself kind of getting choked up like you can just tell that regardless of the relationship between belichick and brady or whatever that the relationship between tom and the craft family is something that is significant which makes it so insane to me when Tom Brady went to Mr. Kraft's house to tell him that he was leaving. Like that must have really sucked for both of them. Um, Doing it behind closed doors, you know, obviously all of that stuff. But um, that just must have really been hard for the both of them because they have such mutual respect. So we, we watched the very end of the Celtics game that night in the parking lot of Gillette after we got out. And then obviously now, um, you know, the Celtics have, have won the championship. So, um, I do have info on the Celtics parade. So because of the heat wave that new England is sitting under right now, they're expecting temps of almost a hundred degrees on Thursday. So they have decided that the Patriots, I mean, excuse me, the Celtics parade is going to be on Friday. It's going to start at 11 AM in front of the TD garden on Causeway street It's going to pass by City Hall Plaza and the Boston Common on Tremont Street, and then it is going to go up the wrong way of Boylston Street and end at the Heinz Convention Center, uh, which is something that they have done for both the Bruins and the Celtics in the past. Um, Obviously, the Red Sox parades, they come down Boylston Street, and then they went um, down past City Hall Plaza and like ended up in the river. You'll remember the first Patriots parade where people were like jumping in the river. They were doing it for the Sox, too. Uh, They are not going to have a big stage and a big thing set up in City Hall Plaza. I think because of all of the renovations that they've done in City Hall Plaza, it's just different down there. So the rolling rally parade starts at 11 a.m. on Friday morning at the TD Garden on Causeway Street. And um, it's going to be a hell of a party. I, I think the parades are just amazing. They are so much fun. I've been to almost all of them. Um, I am hoping to be able to make this one Friday morning, so we'll see what happens. But those are all of the details. The city of Boston um, has all of the specific routes, the road closures. The um, the parks department has announced that there's a bunch of stuff getting closed, like the Granary Graveyard and other things along the Freedom Trail that are going to intersect with the parade because it's just going to be impossible to like do historical tours in the middle of a Celtics um, rolling rally parade. So... Uh, The whole city is just going to be insane. And hopefully the temperatures are going to let up a little bit because it is hot right now. Um, All right. So I got a bunch of stuff I want to talk to you guys about. This got announced last week and this deal is good for the entire season. You guys know that I have been a skydiver for 25 and a half years now. Um, I got my license um, I, I worked on it all through 1999 and got my license to jump solo, um, Labor Day weekend of 1999, but I made my first tandem in the fall of 1998. And so if you have ever wanted to check off skydiving from your bucket list, this mistress carry deal is good all summer long. You can go to jumptown.com, make an appointment to make a tandem skydive. And if you use the code mistress carry, you can get $40 off of your tandem skydive. This is where I learned to skydive. I've been jumping there for 25 years. They are the oldest commercial drop zone in the United States. So it was there back in the 50s where people were taking old surplus military stuff and started skydiving for fun. 
Um, and so the history of Jump Town in Orange Mass goes back a long, long way in the sport. And so you guys know from time to time that I'm always trying to bring you Mistress Carrie deals, try and save you a little bit of money. So if you have ever wanted to try skydiving, use code Mistress Carrie, go to jumptown.com. They are open seven days a week and you can make an appointment for a tandem at any point this summer or fall. And um, Annie Ange joining us, 1998. That was a great jump. Annie Ange jumped with me. My second jump, Annie Ange jumped with me. It was awesome. Um... So if you want to go jumping, you can save 40 bucks on your jump. Use the code Mistress Carrie. This just got announced today. Speaking of skydiving, the second annual uh, USMC Scout Sniper Association Skydiving Boogie is happening on Saturday, July 13th at Jumptown Skydiving. So uh, this is um, uh, an event we started last year encouraging... Uh, marine veterans and specifically snipers, but really anybody that wants to come out and make a tandem skydive um, to get a bunch of Marines together, to get a bunch of veterans together, to go out and make discounted jumps. All of the prices are right there. Some people have their own gear. Some people need to rent gear. Some people want to do a tandem with video. Some people want to do a tandem without video. Um, but you can make an appointment, tell them you're with the Scout Sniper Association um, it's a whole day's long worth of, of events. Uh, we end up going out for food and drinks afterwards, after the jumping is over. But we did this last year and it was absolutely amazing. Um, there is going to be a link for commemorative t-shirts. So if you want to support the Scout Sniper Association, but you're not able to go to the event, um, this is up on the event calendar at mistresscarry.com. I am going to be there to host the event that day. Um, I am waiting on the link to be able to uh, order the t-shirts. And then at least you can, th this is what the t-shirts look like right here, by the way. Um, then at least you can buy a t-shirt and support the Scout Sniper Association. So uh, super excited about the event. It's coming up in just a few Saturdays. And if you go to the event calendar at mistresscarry.com, um, all the details are there. Or you can go to the Mistress Carry Veterans Rock uh, group on Facebook and all of that information has been posted up there as well. So, um, also wanted to let you know, speaking of Marine veterans, congratulations to our own Travis, who is here in the war room with us tonight, host of the Oscar Mike radio podcast, a proud Marine veteran himself. Travis has been doing Oscar Mike radio, the podcast for a really long time. He had me on the podcast in the first 100 episodes. He asked me to come back for episode 100, and I have been back on the next 100th episode ever since. So 100, 200, 300, and now myself and Bill Moore from Project New Hope are featured on episode 400 of Oscar Mike Radio, and that episode is up in the blog at mistresscarry.com. So if um, you haven't checked it out yet, uh, Oscar Mike Radio, Travis has really great conversations about all things veterans. Um, and, um, you know, he knows he's a Marine veteran himself. And so um, to get a chance to go on there with Bill Moore from Project New Hope to uh, talk about all of the veterans work that we've done together, to start talking about the Mistress Carrie ice cream that's going to get launched this summer, that's going to benefit Project New Hope, and just all of the ways that we've worked together over the years um, was just really great. So Travis, to you, congratulations on 400 episodes. Thank you for letting me be part of so many of them. To Bill Moore and the staff at Project New Hope for continuing to move the bar when it comes to uh, local, uh, amazing, veterans-oriented organizations that are doing so many wonderful things from providing resources to... Um, uh, you know, holiday gifts for veterans, kids to school supplies, to clothing, to food, uh, in their food pantry, to, uh, things for new babies, for veterans, families that are struggling. Um, uh, just 
they just do amazing work. By the way, the Scout Sniper Association is commenting on Instagram right now with the link to buy the t-shirts. I will get that link up on mistresscarry.com on the event calendar uh, as soon as the show is over so that you guys can order the t-shirts. Uh, if you want to support the event, but you're not able to go, or if you just want to buy the t-shirt and then wear it to the event, that's great too. Um, but you can get the details on the uh, skydiving boogie with the Scout Sniper Association at mistresscarry.com. Travis, congratulations. He says in the comments, thank you so much for coming on with Bill. Travis watching on YouTube. Um, I just think it's a, it's a testament to stick to you know, anybody that starts something new, anybody that gets into podcasting or gets into any kind of video streaming, uh, when you're starting something new, the perseverance required to kind of push through the difficulties, the growing pains, all of that. So to hit 400 episodes is significant. So Travis, you are a rock star. Now, I know some people, including Rob Rivera from Nonpoint, who were chiming in on Instagram, were talking about bringing the band back to Charleston. Well, he's saying that because if you missed the announcement a couple of weeks ago, you can now hear me middays um, on 98 Rock in Charleston, 10 to 3 every weekday. You can stream the station at my98rock.com. You can also download the 98 Rock app and listen anywhere. Um, super excited to add another station. Uh, all the links, everything you need to know are up at mistresscarry.com, but uh, my98rock.com is where you want to go. There is also links and QR codes right on the website to be able to download the app as well. Another place that you can hear me is 100 FM The Pike in Massachusetts, and coming up this Thursday, why not on the hottest day in the middle of a heat wave would we not want to broadcast live from a baseball game? Live from Polar Park this Thursday afternoon starting at 3 o'clock in the hopefully air-conditioned Shearwood Diner at Polar Park. It's a throwback Thursday game, and my guest on the show this week is going to be Red Sox legend Jim Rice. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, also on the show this week, we are giving away um, tickets to see Slash and his Serpent Festival Blues Show at the Leader Bank Pavilion in Boston on August 1st. So be listening all week to try and win those. And then, of course, coming up July 20th uh, is the annual Pike Hair Fest and August 31st is the annual Pike Rock Fest. Two different shows, both at Indian Ranch and Webster. This one, one of the craziest parties of the year with the mullets and the spandex and the jorts and the giant hair and the old school concert shirts. And then this is usually like the last big party before the leaves start to change and we start preparing for the inevitable winter. Um, Rockfest is at the end of August. Um, you can go to pikefm.com or download the Pike app if you want to listen to the station or get more details on that. And then, of course, you can hear me every weekday afternoon on 106.3 The Bone in Portland, Maine. You can download the Bone app. You can go to 1063rocks.com or 1063thebone.com. Either way, and um, stream the show, stream the station, download the app, uh, get more details on all of that at mistresscarry.com. So uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Michelle says, MC, did you get my second email? Michelle, are you talking about the accident? Oh, I saw it. It's craziness. Bish says, Carrie, can you post the link to Facebook as well? Uh, Bish, are you talking about the skydiving event? Which link to Facebook are you talking about? Because um, if you go on any of my social media pages, there is a link to my link tree. And all of the links to literally everything Mistress Carrie related is on my link tree as well. So um, that's the link in my... Um, my profile page on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, all of that. It's, it's all up there. The link to my link tree. Tracy says, Jim Rice, an authentic gentleman. Keith says, download the bone. Almost $5,000 in damage, says Michelle. Yeah, crazy car accident. I did get the pictures that you sent. Just insanity. Um, okay, so let's recap last week's podcast episode because... Uh, I am afraid I'm going to dehydrate and melt under all of these lights here in the war room. Mm. Last week, episode 210 of the Mistress Carrie podcast featured Troy McClawhorn and Terry Leroy from Killington Pit. 
I got a message from Terry Leroy the other day that said, oh my God, thank you so much. The episode came out great. We're getting ready to release a new video. We will send you everything as soon as it comes out. Uh, but the episode couldn't have come out at a better time for us. So super excited. Troy McClawhorn and Will Hunt, who are the two guys on this side of the picture, are in Evanescence. The bald guy right here in the middle is the lead singer, Terry Leroy. And these guys all got together during COVID because of their mutual shared love of all things heavy metal. True metal. I'm talking Maiden and Judas Priest and Queensryche. Like these, except all of those kinds of bands. Um, so originally they just started collaborating on... Um, cover songs. Then they just started writing their own songs. And, uh, so they are going to start putting out original music as well. So, um, keep your eye on these guys because I know they want to tour. They've got a lot of plans coming. I've known Troy, as you guys heard in this the episode for 20 plus years from back when he, um, was in MK ultra, which turned into the band double drive. But I met him when he made a guest appearance on the second Seven Dust record, Home, and Clint Lowry and the guys from Seven Dust introduced me to him. So we've known each other a really, really long time. Speaking of knowing someone for a really, really long time, this week's episode, you guys know that there have been episodes, the Sully episode, the Simple Man episode with Shinedown, that have been super sentimental to me um, because I've known them for ever. Corey Taylor is the same kind of way. The artist that I really got to know in the early, early stages of my career. And this week's episode is one of those episodes. Um, I couldn't help being a little maternal for this episode because I have known Morgan and Mercedes Lander from Kitty since they were literal teenagers when the band first broke. And Kitty is back. They have a brand new album. I believe it's their first in 13 years coming out on Friday called Fire. The Fire vinyl that the album is available on is amazing. We talk about it in this week's episode. Um, but it was really, really hard for me to not sound like maternal in my pride for how the girls in Kitty have really navigated through so much craziness. And we spent a lot of time on this week's episode talking about the difference in rock and metal now versus the mid to late 90s. When Kitty first came out, they were the only all-female band. There were a lot of people that um, discounted them because of it. There were a lot of times where they were treated completely inappropriately based on their age, when the band broke, Morgan was 17 and Mercedes was 15. And they were out on tour at that age with Slipknot, which we talk about in the episode. And they would get asked really inappropriate questions by people in the media. Um, they toured with their parents, who were their guardians, obviously, and tour managers. So they were sheltered and, and, and watched. They still enjoyed touring, but obviously they weren't just kind of thrown to the wolves. So I got to know their parents as well because they were always on tour with the band. Um, but to really watch the way these girls have navigated the changes in rock and metal over the last 20 plus years, um, to watch them both blossom into their careers, to watch them both grow up in front of all of us, to get married and to decide, you know what, um, we want to bring the band back. We want to release new music. They're going to be part of the Resurrected Mayhem Fest in California later this year. Uh, so there's a lot going on with Kitty. And I was so excited when Morgan agreed to be on the show. I haven't seen her in years. The band has been inactive for a while. And uh, when she popped up on the Zoom screen, I was just so um, um, excited to see her. So uh, that is... Um, coming out tonight at midnight. Hey, Wednesday. Hey. So episode 211 of the Mistress Carrie podcast features Morgan Lander from Kitty. It goes live at midnight. Travis says, get out. Oh, wait, hold on. The comments are fast and furious here. Uh, get out. Listen to Kitty in the Marine Corps. We would go from Corn to 311 to Fear Factory and then Kitty. Travis, they're back. New album on Friday. Unbelievable. It's going to be awesome. 
Um, let's see. Oh, you guys are having conversations about sweaty balls. Swoop is swoop is very real today. Tracy says, yeah, especially in the war room right now, because of all the lights, it's just getting hotter and hotter. Eric says Morgan is still beautiful. Um, she's just a total badass. Like it is so much different. We're seeing bands now like Plush and The Pretty Reckless and New Year's Day and artists like Lilith Czar and Diamante and you know, obviously Hailstorm and Evanescence and in this moment, so many, even, you know, a couple weeks ago, Royal Lynn, so many more female artists are coming out, but Morgan's very well aware that Kitty was one of the bands that, that really kind of paved the way. They took a lot of flack for being an all girl band in hard rock and heavy metal. And, uh, the fact that they have weathered all of this and are back is huge. And one of the things we talk about in this week's episode is giving credit to the guy groups that took these guys out on the road in the early days, specifically Slipknot. I, in the early years of my radio career, had some pretty cool bosses that I went out on tour with Kitty and Slipknot for a week through Florida, ended up in DC. Um, I think I told you the drunk story about how I flew back drunk very early in the morning, landed at Logan, took a cab to the radio station and passed out on the couch in my boss's office after being on tour with Slipknot and Kitty for a week. And he came into work, saw me sleeping because I was doing nights at the time and my car was at the radio station and I was too drunk to drive home. So I slept at the radio station and I woke up at like lunchtime and my boss was using ozone's computer in his office while ozone was on the air so that i could sober up from my drunken slipknot stupor um those were some good times we had some good times donna says boob sweat yeah swoob swass swoob level in the war room right now is at like a 9.5 i'm not gonna lie it's pretty hot in here so episode 211 goes live at midnight tonight if you subscribe to the podcast, you get the weekly episodes, and then Monday through Friday, you get the sit wrap, so I give you all of your rock news, music headlines, uh, entertainment updates, everything about technology, vinyl, streaming, bands breaking up, bands announcing albums, going on tour, tickets going on sale, all of that kind of stuff um, is available, and it uploads first thing in the morning, so you can listen to it when you're getting ready to go to work, or when you're in the drive through getting your coffee, whatever it is. Uh, if you uh, subscribe, you can get me anywhere. If you're trying to figure out where can I listen to the podcast, the sit rep, all of it, the weekly episodes, the answer is everywhere. So no matter what podcast app you use, if you like listening to podcasts on YouTube, or if you just want to go to mistresscarry.com, find the episode you want to listen to and just hit play. Um, it's basically unlimited the number of places that you can listen to the Mistress Carrie podcast. So there you go. Uh, holding strong at 149 countries still though. So we have not yet hit 150 countries. I thought the girls in the warning were going to help us get over that. But as you can see, we have got pretty much all of Central and South America filled in. So um, I obviously need to have more Middle Eastern and more African bands on the show to be able to expand the show that we need to to get to 150 countries. So uh, let's see. Okay, if you're celebrating your birthday today on June 18th, you're sharing it with Takeoff with Blake Shelton, with Dizzy Reed, the longtime keyboardist from Guns N' Roses, and you share your birthday with a freaking Beatle. So cheers to you, Sir Paul McCartney. Um, celebrating his birthday today as well. So happy birthday if today's your birthday. Happy unbirthday to Keith. Mm. Champagne or that Prosecco is good. All right, I'm going to run down a bunch of these headlines really quick. I don't want to keep you guys too, too late um, because I'm sweating my ass off. In case you're tuning in late, here's all the details. Pause if you need to read it, but all the details on the Celtics rolling rally to celebrate Banner 18. Speaking of the garden... So many shows coming, including Incubus on the Morning View Tour, the Weezer Flaming Lips Dinosaur Jr. Tour, Jelly Roll, 21 Pilots, uh, Jeff Lynn's ELO, and um, the guys in the Black Keys. Hold on, I'll put these over here. These guys over here. They announced that they canceled their arena tour. They have since signed new management. They now share the same management as like Stone Tumble Pilots and a bunch of other bands. Um, 
And they're saying they're going to make a touring announcement soon. And also, um, Dan Auerbach from the band saying that they got screwed and that they were going to tell people how so that it didn't happen to them, but they have not made those announcements yet. So that show is canceled at the TD Garden. DCU Center has got the Silver Scream Con coming on September 13th through the 15th. And Iron Freaking Maiden is going to be at the DCU Center in Worcester coming up on November 6th. Uh, Big Night Live in Boston, which was the site of part of the Boston Massacre last night at the Garden. Big Night Live is one of the new clubs that's part of the whole Garden Complex right on Causeway. The Warning is going to be there on September 13th. Cold Chamber is going to be there September 17th. Asking Alexandria is going to be there on October 8th. Uh, The Xfinity Center... Hardy is going to be there on Friday, and then it is just a full summer of outdoor shows at the Xfinity Center. Hardy, it's going to be a warm one Friday night. It's not going to be quite as hot as it's going to be on Thursday, but um, it's going to be busy. Greta Van Fleet at the Mohegan Sun Arena in August. Godsmack, Nothing More, and Flat Black are going to be up north in July and then uh, in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Arena at the end of October. Seven Dust back-to-back shows at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. And this show is pretty spectacular. Um, It is uh, the music of, um, oh my God, my brain just flew out of my head. Hold on. Where did my brain go? (sighs) Hold on a second. Now I got to go and double check this. So mad right now. Can somebody help me out in the comments? Yes, drink, social, yes, exactly. King Crimson. The music of King Crimson, uh, this is Adrian Ballou, Steve Vai, and yes, that is Danny Carey from Tool, by the way, which is why all of those prog rock geniuses are all part of that band. Mm. I'm going to blame the champagne and the heat. Um, Okay, more shows to talk about because a bunch of stuff got added as well. Uh, Leader Bank Pavilion shows, including I Prevail and Hailstorm Slash. Be listening to the Pike this week to win tickets to that show. The 311 Unity Tour, Bush's Loaded Greatest Hits Tour, Falling in Reverse with Dance Gavin Dance, Black Veil Brides, and Tech Nine. That's in September. And the Jane's Addiction Tour um, is going to be there in September as well. You're melting. You think? Oh my God, it's so freaking hot in here. The air conditioners are not holding up against all the lighting here in the war room tonight. It's just not. Gillette Stadium, Metallica, August 2nd and 4th. Rise Against at Roadrunner coming up on October 24th. No one likes Swamp Butt. Trust me, I have it right now. All right, the Fenway Concert Series. This Friday night. So after the Celtics parade... Then this is happening at Fenway. Hoodie and the Blowfish, Collective Soul, the Bare Naked Ladies, and Edwin McCain. The Foo Fighters debuted a previously unreleased, unheard song um, kicking off their European tour. They are going to be at Fenway coming up July 21st. Blink-182, Def Leppard and Journey with Heart, Green Day, The Smashing Pumpkins, Rancid and the Linda Lindas, and of course, Pearl Jam. So lots of shows at Fenway. Annie Yench says, it'll get worse. Very funny. This isn't a hot flash thing. It's freaking ridiculously hot here in the war room. Um, Flat Black is going to be at the Palladium at the end of July around those Godsmack dates that we were talking about earlier. Set it off New Year's Day from ashes to new October 27th. That's going to be at the Palladium. By the way, just in time for Halloween, Ash Costello is going to be all over this. The No Effects Finale Tour at the end of August and beginning of September at Campanelli Stadium in Brockton and the New England Hardcore and Metal Festival at the Palladium coming up September 22nd. Uh, Roadrunner, Newfound Glory, Kaleo, The Hives, The Red Clay Strays, who opened up for the Rolling Stones, Rise Against, and Dayseeker, um, 
You guys are wishing River Rose a happy second birthday. I can't believe the grandbaby is already two. It's just insane. Aloha on Instagram to Mia. Please tell me you're in Hawaii right now, checking in on Instagram, watching cocktails in the war room. Uh, Gary Clark Jr., that is a typo, was already at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway. Uh, Kings of Leon is going to be there in September, and Queens of the Stone Age just announced a second date. Originally, this was going to kick off their North American tour. Now it's this date. So this is a new date. It's been added to the uh, event calendar at mistresscarry.com already with the link to get tickets for that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, House of Blues, Rival Sons and Clutch, and Hate Breed with Carcass Harm's Way and Crypta. Right, Wednesday? I know, we're melting in here. Keith Wallen from Breaking Benjamin is going to be on his solo tour at the Paradise Rock Club. That is coming up on July 22nd. Also, Guar just added a show at the Paradise as well. Uh, that one is going to end up on the website uh, tonight. I just didn't get around to putting it up there today. Uh, did you check out the cherry pickers, Donna wants to know? I did, I just haven't bought one yet, and all the cherries are gone off the tree. Like, if I don't get them, the birds get them. City Winery has got a bunch of new shows, including Cowboy Mouth, Barry Goudreau from Boston's Engine Room, uh, Robbie Krieger from The Doors, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. John Five has got two shows on the same day, September 1st, an earlier show and a later show. And Richie Kotzen is also going to be at City Winery Boston. Um, the newly renovated stage at Suffolk Downs. Huge show at the end of this month. Day to remember the story so far. Four years strong. These tickets are on sale right now. I have not checked out all of the renovations at Suffolk Downs yet, but I have heard it is awesome. So super excited for that. Uh, don't encourage Keith. Tracy says, nothing worse than stuff sticking to yourself. Yeah, you guys are talking about not having pants on. Spelling mistake, drink. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, new release is out on Friday. Avril Lavigne's Greatest Hits, the new EP from Black Veil Bride's Bleeders that I talked to Andy Bierzak about a few weeks ago, and Kitty's new album, Fire, are all out on Friday. Mail call this week, no mail call. So Wednesday just popped her head up. She's like, wait, what? No mail call tonight, darling. Sorry. Um, but if you need to send anything into the show, you can do it at that address. Uh, we'll bring mail call back next week. Uh, it is a heat wave, so if you need a tank top, sun's out, guns out, the tank tops are available online in the shop at mistresscarry.com if you want to keep yourself nice and cool. And if you do not have a Mistress Carry backstage pass yet, um, not only do you get exclusive monthly live streams, you can submit podcast interview questions, you get travel blog updates, early access to event tickets, exclusive concert ticket giveaways. So if you have a Mistress Carry backstage pass, right now you have access to tickets to Cage the Elephant at the Xfinity Center and Hailstorm and I Prevail at the Leader Bank Pavilion. You also get merch discount codes when we launch new merchandise in the store. So go to mistresscarry.com, click the Patreon link, or go to patreon.com slash mistresscarry and uh, get a Mistress Carry backstage pass. A reminder of all of the places you can find me online. Of course, all of the radio station apps that you can download. And then uh, Twitter, Threads, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Cameo, YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, the Mistress Carrie podcast pages on Instagram and Twitch, I mean, uh, Instagram and Threads as well. And of course, they are all linked at mistresscarry.com. And a reminder that if you are a veteran-owned business, if you are a volunteer at a veteran uh, nonprofit, or if you just want to get involved with supporting our veterans, if you're a veteran yourself, join the Mistress Carrie Veterans Rock page on Facebook. Um, it's a way to share information, share resources. Um, it's great to ask questions if you're a civilian and you're trying to 
uh, maybe access military records of a loved one, if you're looking for resources for a veteran loved one of yours, or if you're a veteran trying to track down people you served with, you need help filling out forms for the VA or benefits, or if you uh, own a veteran-owned business and you're trying to promote yourself, whatever it is, this Facebook group is a way to bridge the civilian world and the veteran and military world all in a place where it's safe to ask questions, it's safe to post links, but it is all veteran-oriented. So no, it's not a place to talk about music. It's not a place to you know, spam with other stuff. Don't promote your band there. That stuff's all going to get taken down. This group is specifically just for veterans, veterans causes, and for civilians that are passionate about supporting our veterans. So, um, let's see. I think Travis says the veterans group is a great idea, mistress. Travis, thank you very much. I hope you posted episode 400 up in there. There's over a thousand people in the group now and it continues to grow. So what I would ask is if you are a member of the group, please share it on your Facebook profile, share it on your Instagram. Uh, I really need to get the word out there that this is out there so that people can really share information and resources. So just encourage other veterans, you know, other people, you know, friends, relatives, whatever, to uh, join the Veterans Rock Group on Facebook. Um, All right. I think that's it, guys. New episode of the podcast goes live at midnight tonight, episode 211. That is going to feature Morgan Lander from Kitty. Super excited about this week's episode. The new album comes out on Friday. And yes, they are. um, They're waiting in slowly when it comes to... um, touring plans and announcements. It sounds like 2020, the end of 2024, beginning of 2025, are going to be really busy for the girls from Kitty. So super excited about that. Um, Subscribe to the podcast. The new episode launches at midnight. I'll be out on Thursday at the um, Woo Sox game at Polar Park. Jim Rice is going to be my guest on the show. And then, of course, guys, one more time, give it up to the Celtics. Banner 18, cheers to Titletown. Another duck boat rolling rally coming to Boston Friday. Super excited. Hoping to make it myself. Hope to see you guys out there. And um, that's it. I'm going to go melt now. Right, Wednesday? Yeah, we're going to go melt. Exactly. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Good night.